In this video, I'll be comparing the difference between what's called a continuous growth rate and a non-continuous growth rate. This is the formula that's used to model continuous growth or decay. If you're modeling the growth or decay rate in a non-continuous way, you would use this model shown here. Consider the four following examples. The first two are in this form, where the growth rate is being modeled with the continuous growth formula. The last two of the four examples are in the form y equals ab to the t, using the formula to represent constant percent change in a non-continuous way. So first, let's just get a hang of how these equations work. In the first example, notice the coefficient on t, normally called k, is 0.3. I put this in the table right here. The second example, the k value is negative 0.3, and I put that k value here in the chart. Because these are the k values in the continuous growth model, to figure out the continuous percent change, you need only move the decimal to the right twice. Doing so, I would get the number 30. The fact that the number 30 is positive means that I'm getting growth of 30%. Same thing goes with a negative k value, except when I move the decimal to the right twice now, I'm going to get that the change is negative 30%, or you could say that it's declining at a continuous rate of 30%. So generally, you need not construct a convoluted table, you would just know that to tell the continuous growth rate, you could look at the k value, move the decimal over twice. If k is positive, you have growth. If k is negative, you have decline. Notice the way that the non-continuous growth model works completely differently. You probably already learned that if you have an equation in the form y equals ab to the t, that the b value represents the growth factor and can be used to find the percent change. Because I picked some easy examples, you probably do not need to use the formula b equals 1 plus r. So for example, the rule book for the non-continuous growth formula is much different in that if you want growth, b has to be bigger than 1, whereas in the continuous growth model, to get growth, the constant didn't need to be bigger than 1, it just needed to be positive, so k bigger than 0. For the non-continuous growth model, to get something to decrease, the b value has to be smaller than 1, but it's always positive, so I'll add on that it's greater than 0. So for example, 0.7 is less than 1, so this b value from this example means we have something decreasing. Notice how that's different than the continuous growth model, where to get something to decrease, the constant k has to be negative i.e. less than zero. So filling out these two cells now, since this 1.30 came from this example, we have a b value of 1.30, and the example is simple enough, you may know that, that represents a 30% change. Many students just ignore the one, move the decimal over twice. Notice that the number is positive. Positive change means growth, so this is growth by 30%. If you're used to finding the percent change by taking the b value and using this formula, that would look like this. Replacing b with 1.30, you'd solve for r by subtracting 1, and you would get the non-continuous rate as a decimal is 0.3, and you'd have to convert that to a percentage by moving the decimal over twice, and you'd still get 30%. Now to fill in this cell, we have a b value of 0.7 that came from this example here. It's less than 1, so you'll get a decrease. You may think of having a b value of 0.7 as being when you multiply by 0.7, you're finding 70% of something, meaning you're ignoring the other 30. So keeping 70% means you are losing 30%. If you're in the habit of using this formula to take the b value and find the percent change, b would be 0.7. You'd solve for r by subtracting 1. You would get that r is negative 0.3. And this would be your non-continuous growth rate as a decimal, but because we're representing it as a percentage, you would move the decimal to the right twice, and you would get that the percent change is negative 30%. Hopefully this gives you an idea how the different equations work. Knowing this now, I'm going to do examples 2 through 5 here, where I'm to write a formula for a quantity that starts at 100 and grows 7% a year. In the directions above, it directed me to use Q of t to represent the quantity and little t to represent time in years. So I'm writing a formula for a quantity, q of t, 
that starts at 100, that would be my A value. Since it's giving me the growth rate, and it does not say that it's the continuous rate, I'll use the formula AB to the T. A is 100. If I want something to grow 7%, B would be 1.07. If this isn't clear how I got that B value, you can use the formula B equals 1 plus R, and just note that this time, we were given the R value, and we were supposed to find the B value, so you'd be replacing R as a decimal, 7% as a decimal is 0.07, and then you see that B is 1.07. Now, I'm supposed to write a formula for a quantity that starts at 100, so my A value would be 100. Because it's decreasing 7% per year, and there's no mention of the word continuous, if I want something to go down 7%, that means I need only keep 93% of its value, and the B value would be 0.93. If you'd rather use the formula, one way to do that is to think of the formula B is equal to 1 plus R. If you did it that way, you'd have to replace R with a negative number because we have something that's decreasing. So decreasing 7% can be thought of as an R value of negative 0.07. Just converting 7% to a decimal and then making it negative because it's decreasing. If you did this on your calculator or perhaps in your head, you can see that that is exactly 0.93, giving me the B value that I used here in the formula. The next two examples are exactly the same. I literally copied and pasted the questions from 2 and 3 and numbered them 4 and 5, and I added the word continuous. Since I added the word continuous, I'm going to be using the formula that quantity is equal to some initial value. I've got the base of E. K is my continuous growth rate or decay as a decimal, and T is time. So for this example, as the others, my A value is 100. It says continuous, so I'm going to use the continuous model. Back in my chart, if I want something to grow 7% continuous, I would just convert that to a decimal and say K is 0.07. Remember in the continuous model, K being positive means growth, K being negative means decline. So I just replace K with 0.07, and I'm done with the model. The next example is exactly the same, except I added the word decreases. So it still starts at 100. It's still changing at a continuous rate, so I'm going to use the model with the E. To get it to decrease, remember, with the continuous model, to get something to decrease 7%, I need only move the decimal over twice, and K is just some negative number. A K value of negative 0.07, means it's declining at a continuous rate of 7%. So now I'm replacing K here with negative 0.07. Don't forget your input variable T, and I'm done. Now that you get the hang of going from the formula to the percent change and the continuous percent change, and then backwards where the percent change is given and you write the formula, now I'd like to show you how to convert from one form to another. So this part of the video I'm going to show you how to convert from one form to another. Before I do the converting, let me show you that the chart that I want to fill out has several cells that I can fill out without converting. So for example, these two rows I'm given equations in the form y equals ae to the kx, which represents the continuous growth model. Here's the formula in general. So my k is 0.2 in this example. And if I move the decimal over twice, I get that the continuous rate is 20%. In this example, k is negative 0.09. And if I move the decimal to the right twice, I get that the continuous rate is negative 9%, meaning that it's declining at a continuous rate of 9%. But notice, because I was given the continuous growth model, it's very difficult to find the annual rate, because the annual rate can be found by finding the B value, and this wasn't given in the form y equals a b to the x. I'm going to come back to this and show you how we can convert this equation so we can get the annual rate. But one more thing before I do that, if I scroll down, notice that of these eight cells, I can fill out half of them just knowing that my equations of the form a b to the x, and since it is the form y equals a b to the x, it's easy to find the b value in this case. In fact, b is 1.09. In the non-continuous growth model, to get from the B value to the annual rate, you either use the formula B equals 1 plus R, or you know when the B value is 1 point something, you can ignore the 1, move the decimal over twice, and this would be 9% growth, and notice I didn't say the word continuous. If you're using this formula, you would replace B with 1.09,
you'd subtract the 1 and you'd get that the rate as a decimal is positive 0.09 you just have to move the decimal over twice to get positive 9 percent that's nothing more than converting a decimal to a percent in this one b is 0.83 I think of that as if you're multiplying by 0.83, you're keeping 83%, which means you're losing 17%. If you're using the formula b equals 1 plus r to get from the b value to the annual rate, that would be done by replacing b with 0.83, solving for r by subtracting 1. When you subtract 1, you'll find that 0.83 subtract 1 is indeed negative 0.17. Once again, giving me the annual rate as a decimal, you would need only move the decimal to the right twice to convert the decimal to a percentage giving me an annual rate of negative 17 percent notice nowhere in that conversation did I say the word continuous because it isn't the continuous rate we will need to convert this model into y equals ae to the kx to find the k value and determine the continuous annual rate let me go back up here I tend to think of these cells as being the easier conversion because what you need to type into your calculus are already given in the problem I see that there's an e to the point 2 in the problem here you need only type that into the calculator and I summarize these directions above find the k value in the problem in my case it's point 2 and type e to the k in your calculator so for me that would be e to the point 2 doing that may look like this press second division symbol to get an e raised to the point 2 power I get that the several decimal places that that's 1.2214 Think of it as you just converted the equation from this form to y equals ab to the x by simply typing in your calculator what e to the point 2 is. We typed this in to our calculator and we got that to be approximately 1.221. Now the equation is in the form y equals ab to the x. That means b is 1.221, giving me an annual rate of 22.1 percent did that by ignoring the one moving the decimal over twice again if you wanted you could use the formula b equals one plus r replace b with 1.221 and solve for r in this example same thing except you have a different number to type in your calculator e to the negative 0.09 that would look like this second division symbol to get an e raised to the negative 0.09 i get that that's equivalent to about 0.9139 Again, you can think of it as you converted the equation from this form to y equals ab to the x by simply typing this in your calculator and getting that it was 0.9139. Now that the equation is in the form y equals ab to the x, I know that b is 0.9139, which means we're keeping about 91% and losing 9. If you want to use the formula this time, because the numbers are a little ugly. If b is 0.9139, I would find the rate by subtracting 1. And if I subtracted the 1 over, that would give me an r value of negative 0.0861. That would be the annual rate as a decimal, but since they want it as a percent, I would need to move the decimal over twice, giving me that it's negative 8.6%. I left the one out because it said to round the annual rate to one decimal. So notice that what I've done is basically follow the directions up here. I was given an equation in this form. I was able to answer half the questions in the chart, but the other half I had to convert the model to this before filling in the rest of the chart. We found the k value in the problem. We typed e to that k value in our calculator. That gave us b. And then you find the annual rate either using this formula or perhaps you could do it in your head. The only thing I haven't done in this video is convert from y equals ab to the t to y equals ae to the kt. So to do that, I will identify the b value in the given problem. That's what it says here. Simply type the natural log of b in my calculator to find k. So I will be given b and my job will be to find k and I'll just use the formula that k is equal to the ln of b. Let me show you what that will look like. Here I have the b value 1.09. To find the k value, I will simply type in the natural log of b. b is 1.09. On my calculator, I locate the ln key in my calculator. I type in 1.09. And I get approximately 0 0.086. To get from the k value to the continuous annual rate, 
I simply move the decimal over twice, giving me that I have a continuous rate of 8.6%. The fact that it's positive means it's growing. For this problem, using the formula would give me k is the natural log of b is 0.83 this time. And I need a calculator to get an approximation to the natural log of 0.83. I get it's approximately negative 0.186. Moving the decimal over twice, keeping the negative symbol, the continuous annual rate is negative 18.6%, meaning that if something's going down 17% a year, that equates to a continuous rate of negative 18.6%. You can think of it as we converted the model from 35 times 0.83 to the x to the form y equals ae to the kx. The a value is always the same, so that's 35. And we took b and found k by typing in the natural log of b. That came out negative 0.186. And by converting the model from the non-continuous model to the continuous model, I was able to ascertain what the continuous annual rate was for both of these. If you watched this whole video, you should be commended. The original video was 31 minutes long before completed. Hopefully, in the editing process, I can narrow that down.